Okay, let's now do our um, income statement. And one thing that will save you a bit of time in the income statement, which in fact reasonably straightforward. So go new window, and that will give you a new window of this. You would have seen nothing. Now go arrange all uh, vertical, and if you've had, and before you do this, you should only have um, two of your items open. So what will happen now is you can have two screens. And why will this be helpful? Well, you want to copy from one to another. So let's go to the trial balance in the first one. Because we're now going to take the information out of the trial balance. So uh, computers and Armadale income statement for year ended June 30, 2012. Revenue. So where are we going to go? Right uh, down here to um, sales. Less um, sales returns and allowances, but we didn't have any of those, so we'll leave it out. So we'll go straight to bad debt expense and then to discount given. So, our sales, I'll just drag this across a bit further. And again, it's just copying the information out of here. Sales, $913,000. Bad debt expense, won't go green. Why? Because it's the carry-on effect from... Um, the issue before discount and again we'll see how this item carries on net sales is sales less contrast to sales will give us our net sales so net sales revenue less cost of goods sold less cost of goods sold we'll put that in equals so our gross profit is net sales revenue minus cost of goods sold now we're getting down to expenses and we've got um, a few lots of expenses we've got they're divided up between sales admin and finance. So sales, reasonably straightforward. There's only one sales expense, and that's sales salaries. Then we have a run of admin. So be here, be guided by a chart of accounts. So depreciation expense, all the way through to rent expense, and then bank fees. So we should have really thinking about it in terms of chart of accounts. Um, it would have made sense to have interest expense the last item in our chart of accounts. However, here's one thing to bear in mind. In this um, case, we've been asked to do a certain structure of the financial statements. There may be other times we're asked to do a different structure, and so um, grouping finance items together may not be quite so significant. And finally, the finance item is interest. So let's put those items in. So, sales salary is going to be about 52000 Good, yep, we can see these items go in. Remember, they're pretty much a chart of accounts order, with one exception. Oops. 
just to move this over a bit, we've copied across all we need. Total expenses, add those up. Our net, must put them as equals. Net profit, um, this won't go the right colour, uh, gross profit minus total expenses. And there is our net profit statement done. Now we can move on and do the changes in equity. So changes in equity is um, a noble um, opening balance at the beginning of the year is Um, we did take a bit of a shortcut in setting up our uh, chart of accounts. It's part of the challenge we had between simplicity and complexity um, and getting everything in. <coughs> and here is one of those times when um, <coughs> that shortcut is not going to work for our advantage because ideally we should be able to go to the opening balance of drawings, uh, the opening balance of capital, and take it straight out of here. Uh, unfortunately, we had capital introduced during the year, so we are in fact going to have to go to uh, the general ledger to get that information, the opening balance. We could also get it from the closing balance from last year. So opening balance of uh, capital, is $60,000. The opening balance for B Noble will be $60,000. I did take B Noble and I need to change that to 109. Now as well we're going to want to add capital introduced Again, back to the general ledger. Um, capital introduced, 25,000. Capital introduced, 25,000. Share of profit. Was that divided by two? Here, share of profit. 48,435 divided by two. Now let's finish up. So, um, A Noble had 60,000 beginning of the year, 24,000 profit, capital introduced 25,000. <coughs> so, subtotal. Hundred nine thousand less drawings. We can take that straight out of here. Two thousand five hundred equals their closing balance. Hundred nine minus two thousand five hundred. Now, after we do the closing entries, we will find that A Noble Capital comes in at this balance. We should also find that B Noble Capital comes in at the same balance because they've done everything identically. Add share of profit, add capital introduced. Here's the subtotal. Um, less drawings. equals again the same amount we add these two together to get the total equity 
and <coughs> this equity will be important because when we go to the balance sheet, let's transfer through this through to the balance sheet now. Um, a noble capital. The income statement, you get to see how these are related. Um, a noble capital, $106,718. And B noble capital will be the same. Again, when we do the balance sheet, um, assets must equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Um, I'll get you started on the balance sheet. Again, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Current assets, we do the same thing. We can come up to the items at the top. Current assets, here is cash at bank. Accounts receivable. Allowance for bad debts. Then therefore we'll have net accounts receivable. Uh, note receivable, inventory, and discount received. Uh, there's no discount received, so I won't put that in. Is um, prepaid insurance. So again, we can just complete these items. We need to go over to the end. Cash at bank. Oops. Um, accounts receivable. Less. Allowance for bad debts. So net accounts receivable is 170,000 minus. 10,000, which is 163,000. Note receivable was nothing. Inventory was 258,000. And prepaid insurance was 10,000. Let me go back and look. Oh, I've left out office supplies. Right. There was no note receivable we've only put in. So let me fix this up. Um, notes receivable. Inventory should go here. Then offer supplies. So total current assets, it won't work because again we've got the issue with account with um, allowance for bad debts. So you can just get a sense here of how it carries through. Right out. So I'll give you the opportunity to go on and do um, your non-current assets and then your liabilities and make sure that you get um, this to balance.